Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you the simple change that I make to draw the driver each and every time so that you guys can be doing exactly the same as well. So the first change that I want you to make is when you take your normal driver stance, what I want you to experiment with is moving the golf ball further forward in the stance. Now again, the whole point of this video is experimentation about how to draw the driver. So I want you to take your normal ball position and move it so that the ball would be located in the center of your lead foot. So this is probably gonna be a couple of inches further forward than where you would normally be. By moving the ball further forward, this is gonna change our angle of attack. So imagine I'm hitting a mid iron off the floor. To be able to hit a mid iron successfully, I would need a neutral club path and I would need a slightly neutral, if not negative angle of attack. To ensure I hit the ball successfully from off the floor, if we have an angle of attack which is positive, which means that we're hitting up on the golf ball, this can cause all sorts of mishits, topping the ball and hitting the ground potentially too soon. Going back to the driver, because we don't have as much loft, we're generally only playing around with anything up to about 12 degrees, then we can't hit the golf ball successfully off the floor. And that's why we must use the tee. So when we're using the tee, what we need to do now is we need to find a way to have a more positive upward hitting motion. So a more positive angle of attack so we can hit the ball from off the tee. So on this occasion, in theory, the club's sort of coming down early and then it's rising by the time it hits the golf ball. Now I think using this alignment stick here to help us represent this, if you like, sort of club path and bottom part of the swing, what we can see is as we've moved the alignment stick so that it's striking from off the tee peg, what we can also see is although this improves the angle of attack, it also moves the club path too much to the left of the target. So to draw the golf ball, what we're going to need to do is not only hit more up on the ball, but we're also going to need to shift the swing more to the right of the target and then get used to the club face pointing to the left of the club path to produce more of a draw. One of the best ways I think you can practice this is, and this is a simple drill that I get a lot of my students to do, is you can use a laser pen. A laser pen is going to represent where the shaft of the golf club is basically moving. So if I got set up at home and I place this blue alignment stick on the floor here to represent my target line, then all I'm trying to simply practice is two things. The first thing is that what we're trying to do is as I come in towards this downswing, I'm trying to ensure that the laser pen is traveling from the inside of the alignment stick to the outside of the alignment stick, because that's what we're trying to do to be able to control the club path. What we don't want to be doing is swinging outside across this way because that's going to encourage us to strike more down on the ball and that's something that we don't want. But what tends to happen is a lot of golfers tend to get quite good at this type of exercise, leading with the hands etc to encourage the club to come more from the inside. But the problem is you never train yourself to practice the rotation to square the face. Now the simple way that you can do this is you can still do the same drill and exercise but what I want you to do is simultaneously practice getting the back of your left hand or your lead hand facing towards the target at the point opposite the left foot. So from this perspective, it would look more this way. So I'm bringing the club down, so the laser pen is moving from an in to out in terms of its direction, as I then simultaneously work on rotating the face. And all of a sudden, this is gonna give you a much more heightened awareness of the bottom part of the swing. So we've made a couple of alterations so far. You've moved the golf ball further forward to experiment with a more positive angle of attack, hitting more up on the ball. Now what you've also identified is that you're going to swing more up on the ball, you also have to try and feel like you're swinging a little bit more to the right of it to ensure that obviously we can produce that draw, which is where the laser pen comes in. It'll help teach you how to use your hands at the bottom part of the golf swing. The other change that I'd strongly suggest that you play around with would be your actual stance itself. So I think if I took my normal stance here and I want you to experiment with dropping this trail foot back. Now I think to start off with, you could drop the trail foot back quite considerably almost to the point where my trail foot, we can see the way it's in line with my lead ankle. What this is doing is this is well gonna make rotation a lot, lot easier, but it's also gonna give me loads of space to be able to deliver the club correctly as we just practiced with the laser pen. However, that being said, I think a lot of golfers are familiar with this sort of idea, but they still don't exactly rotate correctly. So this drill is really gonna help you ensure that you get a proper rotation in the backswing position. So we want two things for this drill. The, the first one would be a foot wedge. Now you can buy these online. I've got no affiliation to anywhere. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy Callaway Golf, do one. But what it does is it does two things. One, it lifts the leg in the air. And the second one that it does is it also 
sort of pronates the foot. So it really gives you a stronger platform to turn into. And it gives you a much better resemblance of how to use the leg and therefore build up a better interaction with the ground, which again, most students don't tend to do. So you would place that underneath your trail foot, take your stance. And then what I also want you to do is place an alignment stick pretty much in line with your trail ankle or with inside sort of three to four inches of it, similar to what I'm demonstrating here. If you now quite simply keeping that trail foot back on the foot wedge and then flexing that leg, if you quite simply just put the club across your shoulders and just rotate back and see the way I'm getting it to match up. So see the way this alignment stick here, uh, sorry, my golf club here is matched up from my perspective to the alignment stick that is on the floor. Now, as I'm doing this, we can also see the way that I'm encouraging a lot of rotation. So there's a lot of rotation occurring around the sort of pelvis and around the chest area. But the big thing that I'm doing is I'm keeping that trail leg flexed. Keeping that trail leg flexed, pushing pressure in towards the ground is absolutely key to building a solid backswing. Okay, so we have a golf ball, which is further forward. We have a trail foot, which is tucked ever so slightly back, and we have a good rotation in the backswing. What we now want to do is we want to start the downswing utilizing that space that we have created to the side of the body so that we can deliver the club, should we say, from the inside, similar to what we've been practicing with the laser pen, as I mentioned earlier on. There's two things you can do for this. One is a drill. The second one is a swing thought. I would suggest, especially if you're trying to draw the driver, you want to tell yourself slow body, fast arms. The last thing you want to be doing is rotating your body hard at the start of the downswings. It's going to throw your arms more in front of you. That's fine for us, should we say, a straight drive, but not if we're trying to hit a draw. You want to get the feeling that your arms are moving more down towards the side of your body so it'll help you hit more from the inside. One of my favorite drills for this, to use the foot wedge. And what you're going to do is you're going to position the club head, should we say, roughly just in the center of the foot wedge. And you are going to put your feet together, bring your lead foot forward and your trial foot back. So it's basically an elaboration on the whole video. And from this position, what you're going to do is you're going to concentrate on rotating back. And you're just going to make some practice swings where you're making sure that the club is rising up the angulation of the wedge. And you can do a full swing, you can do a short swing, it doesn't matter. The idea of this exercise is just going to simply give you that feeling of your arms moving down to the side of your body in a more upward fashion in the through swing. Again, what we don't want to be encouraging is a movement more this way where we're striking, should we say, theoretically too downward. My last point would be that when you are practicing, there are going to be times when it doesn't go quite right. It's extremely unlikely, for example, that you will be able to take these points into a single practice session and start drawing the golf ball immediately. What is likely to happen is that you are going to miss sh some shots far out towards the right hand side or potentially not exaggerate the feelings enough and still demonstrate possible similar ball flight tendencies that you've already got. But I promise you, working on these areas with an element of patience and perseverance, you will come across that learning curve and be able to hit a draw in time. The key here is perseverance, practice and doing enough repetition inside every practice session. If you found this video really useful, I'd strongly suggest watching this one. In this one, I talk about Hogan's right arm move that is very simple for demonstrating a perfect downswing. See you soon.